Once upon a time, in 1833, Mrs. Arnold Harrison, who was normally credited for the orchid descriptions mainly of the Bifrenaria Harrisoniae and the Cattleya Harrisoniae, bloomed an unknown orchid, and it happened to be the Leptotes bicolor, but she didn't know that, so she sent cuttings and a drawing to Lindley, who determined, hey, this is a new species, and assigned the name Leptotes. Totus, from the Greek for mild and delicate, in reference as an homage to the appearance of the beautiful blooms. So, CareCollab time! Thank you so much for joining me. I am here teamed up together today with What's Up Orchids and Gabriella Carson for Leptotis Bicolor. And my little Bicolor, yeah, she is little but she has doubled in size since I got her. So, hey, there's that. I got her in September of 2018, and she was just these little sticks here, the back ones, and this one was a new growth at the time. So I mounted her because of her growth habit. I thought she would be perfect for a mount. Then I realized how weak she is and the mounting was not an option for me in my hot, dry summers here in southern Spain. That would have killed her. She had nothing to work with. So I potted her up and then I let her be and I was hoping that she would survive. This is a self-watering pot. I had her in semi-hydro regular before. And then she managed to pull through and give me two new growths. And I thought, we are on our way. These growths bloomed. I'm like, this is going to be good. From now on, we're home and dry. I got five blooms, three on one spike, two on the other spike. They can get up to four blooms per spike. But it was nonetheless, I was so happy to see her. And I thought, we are home and dry. Then I thought, now I'm going to mount her. And that was in 2019, since she had recovered. I wanted to go back on a mount because I think they look really pretty. I went to unpot her and her roots were superb. They had grown so well in the semi-hydro setup. There is no way now that I could have put her on a mount and expected those roots to survive through my hot, dry, southern Spanish climate. And curveball, she went back in a pot. I bumped the pot up a little bit because now I didn't want to quetch the new and good roots into the same size pot. Made my life easier, took a bigger pot, bumped her up, and I only got one new growth since then. And it hasn't bloomed for me either. And normally by this time, I should be seeing a spike because she did bloom for me around April, May of... 2020, I had just started my channel and her spikes actually do take quite a long time to grow, but I don't see any signs of anything cracking here at the base because that is normally, that's where they come out. It's like a Sophronites or something. And here at the base, they come out. Yep, not this time, I don't see anything, but hello. It's possible that the repot disturbed the roots and it didn't like it, but it hasn't declined or deteriorated either. So I'm actually not too bothered. Yes, I would love to see blooms, but if they don't manifest themselves, then okay, not a problem. The orchid can get stronger and stronger and maybe next year we get to see some blooms because those blooms, I am telling you, oh, they're so cute. And not only that, they are fragrant. They are so fragrant, they have this gorgeous vanilla fragrance and fun fact it is the blooms and subsequent seed pods of this orchid that are used in desserts as well not just the vining classic vanilla orchid that we know but this one as well the blooms and seed pods would go into ice creams milks teas and even scented candles i think that's pretty amazing i wouldn't do that that's not why I'm growing my Leptotus bicolor, but I think that that is pretty amazing because yes, the fragrance is gorgeous. And the blooms last around hmm, three and a half, four weeks at their prettiest and very, very strong on the vanilla front. For me, it's a must-have orchid simply because she's so small. 
space is not a problem. The Leptotus, there's only like nine species for the entire Leptotus genus. There are some that will only go in cold, you know, cloud forest kind of environments. But this Leptotus bicolor can take cold and she can take hot and dry. So that is perfect for my climate. I have hot, dry summers and then I have cold, wettish winters. Wettish in a sense that if it rains, the humidity is high. And if it doesn't rain, the humidity is higher than I would ever have it in summer, always around the 50 to 54%, which sounds not enough for other people in their grow environments. But for me, that is so much higher than I have in summer, because if I reach 30% humidity in summer, it's a good day. But this one is a little bit more forgiving and robust. The only reason I don't grow her outside just yet, even though she will be able to tolerate my climate, I can go down as low as five degrees Celsius in the winter, and she could tolerate that. But I haven't done that yet because of the fact that I am not convinced that she is strong enough, big enough to able to hold on. So I do baby her in the winter. I bring her inside. I have her under blurple lights, directly under blurple lights, because she is so tiny. She won't get any bigger than this. This is the largest needle that I've managed to grow. The other one was even a little bit more stunted. So because of her size or lack thereof, I have babied her these years and I've always had her inside. My plan is to grow her alongside my Rapiculus lalias in summer, in winter and throughout. That is the plan once she gets up to speed. In the summer, I have her in full shade bright shade mind because I am in southern Spain and I have white walls all around so even if she isn't in direct sun the reflecting light of the white walls gives me very bright shade and you can see that there's some little freckles on her and that's fine that's normal that's good light indicator so the reason I'm thinking she won't bloom this year is just because of root disturbance the year before and you can see there's a root coming out right there and growing outside. At least she's in active growth, which is great. I have not been fertilizing her for the past months because obviously she's not doing anything, but she's been getting regular flushes and I've kept the reservoir always at a little minimum in there to keep the microfiber damp. But I, I don't want to have this too full all the time. This has just been recently flushed and this is the runoff water, so that's why she's a bit fuller. But normally it's just the reservoir is dry, the microfiber remains damp, the ceramus remains damp, although not sopping wet. That's how her roots were acclimated and when I then wanted to mount her, that's what I had to put her back into. In the summer, I do fertilize at 300 parts per million. Not that she requires it. I might need to pipe down on that a little bit. She's not gonna grow any bigger just because I'm adding more fertilizer, but there's a little bit of accumulation of minerals on the surface, and that is where the algae has taken hold. That's why my ceramist looks a little bit nasty, but that's just aesthetics. I'm not bothered. The roots in there are happy, and I'm so pleased to see this one, even though it's coming up and over, that's okay. It will be fine, even though it, it's climbing out of the media. They are epiphytic after all, so let it do its thing. I'm expecting new growths, hopefully soon, if she's not going to bloom. I would like to see a little bit more vigor and growth in my little Leptotis, but we'll have to wait and see. She's from southern Brazil and also Paraguay. The other species in the Leptotis genus, they're all scattered around the Central Americas. But this one specifically is sort of southern Brazil and Paraguay. And here she is in southern Spain. She's not exactly taking off, doing excellently, but she is not going downhill. And that is all I need to see. If an orchid is, in inverted commas, doing nothing, then that doesn't mean that what she's not able to show on the surface, that there's not activity going on in the pot. And that would be a wrap for my little Leptotus bicolor. I do sincerely hope that this was helpful. I would like to say thank you to What's Up Orchids and Gabrielle Carson for jumping on board and sharing the opportunity with me to talk about Leptotus bicolor.
in my opinion, again, for everybody's collection that likes small miniature orchids, but very, very fragrant blooms, this one is a must have. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Thank you so very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Take care. Bye.